also will look into um, the, the concept of plugins, teams, and hosting providers. Basically, uh, what you need to cover, right, uh, in order to uh, get the WordPress website up and running. So let's go straight in. So uh, first topic is building effective websites. And um, for myself, um, I advocate an approach to building websites uh, using this uh, framework called design thinking, right? Design thinking. So design thinking is a five-step process, right? uh, starting with uh, user empathy and ending with uh, prototyping and testing. And so um, perhaps some of you are already familiar with the design uh, thinking process. Basically, it's a way for you to really understand what your users or who your users are and what their real problems and pain points are, uh, developing a picture of them using uh, their pain points and empathy, and then using that persona, right, to, uh, for you to ideate and uh, craft out some solutions for them. So WordPress, um, the platform, comes into play when we are ideating a solution. So it's typically a business solution uh, to a business problem. So the business problem might be how can I as a business uh, get more visibility uh, branding and sales or leads uh, from online, right? So that, that would be the, uh, the how my eyes, what we call the how my I statement. And we then ideate, right? We, we uh, create different ideas around what we can do to help the business reach out to those potential customers online. So typically a website, right? With, would be one of very important uh, channels. In fact, it's, it's normally the foundation of uh, many businesses' uh, marketing efforts. So a good website lets you uh, run effective marketing campaigns. Good website lets you brand yourself effectively in the eyes of your target customers. So after we've done the design thinking process, uh, then we can start to build out right, your ideas uh, in WordPress right, as a prototype. So this stage here, the prototyping, uh, in a typical project implementation, prototyping is a separate phase from production, right? So you prototype as in you create a, like a mock-up first before you actually uh, create the full production site. Now, if you're using WordPress, uh, we found from my experience, right? WordPress, because it's such a powerful uh, platform and such a rapid development platform, you often don't have to separate prototyping from uh, creation of the initial production site. Uh, what I mean that is you, you can prototype directly on WordPress itself, right? So you don't have to use a separate prototyping software, uh, a software, you know, like a design software that gives you a mock-up of how your website will work. You can do it direct, direct in WordPress already. And I'll, I'll show you how uh, in a few slides time. So this is uh, the whole uh, framework. Uh, it's a framework that I also cover uh, in the full training I, I run at Aventis uh, on building up a business website with WordPress using design thinking. Right. So uh, the important thing here is to really not just dive straight into the WordPress platform, uh, but to start understanding what our uh, who our customers are and what their real business uh, challenges are and how we can then use uh, WordPress as a platform, right, to, for our business to uh, effectively reach out to these customers. So assuming that we've gone through this design thinking process uh, and we have an idea, idea uh, from ideation uh, on how our website uh, would look, how our website would function, um, and what type of content we have to put in the website, what kind of look and feel, then we can start to build out um, the website on WordPress itself really. And then we can really start to um, leverage right on the rapid prototyping and the uh, features that WordPress has built into the platform. So WordPress, um, what is the WordPress platform and why is it so powerful for business websites? I'm going to switch uh, slides here to a different set. Okay. And let's zoom in the whole page. Firstly, uh, why do many businesses use WordPress? Uh, even in Singapore, WordPress is the most popular, what we call content management system platform. So it's the most pop popular platform used by businesses ranging from SMEs to 
enterprises uh, to build out their websites on. And there's um, several reasons why this is so. Um, this slide just shows you some of the big companies, right, which uh, have their websites built using on WordPress. So you see many familiar brands on here. In Singapore, in the Singapore context, there are more than 80% uh, of the websites uh, I built on WordPress, right, based on um, publicly available statistics. Uh, so you see WordPress has got um, market domination. So now the question is why WordPress, right? Why do businesses all choose WordPress? Um, it's quite easy to tell if a business is running WordPress, there are certain footprints uh, we can analyze. This is just showing you um, a tool called uh, Is It WordPress? Right, so the link is here. And using this tool, you can uh, quickly tell if a website is running WordPress uh, and as well as some other details on WordPress that is running there. But back to my question, why use WordPress? Because uh, like I mentioned, it's the most uh, popular platform because it has got uh, the most functionality for many businesses and because the basic version of WordPress is uh, free, right? So you don't pay a cent uh, to download the uh, WordPress and use it for your business. What you pay for, right, is your domain. You pay for your hosting because you need, uh, you need somewhere for your website to be uh, hosted, right? So hosting means it's like your home, it's like your address on the internet, right? So when someone types in your domain, uh, your host, right, is, is the address which delivers the, the content of your website. So you can see from the stats here, uh, WordPress, uh, really has a dominant position in the marketplace, right? So uh, I think 29% here is from a global perspective across all kinds of websites. But for business websites, right? Uh, WordPress has got a higher, much higher uh, percentage share of the market. Um, there's one possible point of confusion. When you talk about WordPress, uh, there's actually two versions of WordPress or two flavors. One is the .com version and one is the .org version. Okay, so for purpose of this today's uh, session, I'm really talking about the .org version, right? Um, the .com version is a fully hosted version of WordPress. That means um, it is hosted for you. You don't have to pay for your own hosting, but there are some downsides to it, right? So this slide here lists uh, several of the downsides. In my opinion, uh, after testing both options, right? Um, there's too many downsides, right? This, this option is very limiting. So I only recommend you use the hosted version of WordPress. Uh, if you are in a big hurry, right, to get the website up and you really just want to get something quick and dirty up, uh, then you can use the .com version because uh, everything can be done online. You can create your new website. You can start configuring it uh, totally online. Whereas we'll see uh, when you use the .org version, it means that you have to use your own hosting. So that means you have to first secure and set up your hosting and next uh, install WordPress onto the hosting, right? So the, the .org is uh, the website where you can download the self-hosted version of WordPress from, right? So you need to download the self-hosted version, install it on your hosting. It's not as difficult as it sounds. Uh, in many cases, right, it says uh, uh, done with one or two clicks. So that's for this reason, I recommend, highly recommend that you choose the .org uh, version of WordPress versus the .com version of WordPress. So no matter which version you choose though, uh, the fundamental uh, framework of WordPress is the same. So under the hood, right, this is how WordPress functions. It consists of the platform itself, which you download and install onto your hosting server. And you need a team, right? So you need at least one team. Um, no, let me put it in a better way. You need to select a team, right? In order for WordPress to work, right? So this team will determine the overall look and feel of your website. The colors, uh, the background images, uh, the fonts that you use on the website. And you also need one too many plugins. Okay, so whereas teams, right, are the look and feel, uh, plugins is the functionality. So 
a simple example, right? If you need to have a contact form and collect um, the contact details, right, of people who visit your, your website, that will be done through the use of a plugin. Whereas if you need to change the logo or the fonts on your website, that is done through configuring the theme. Right? So I hope that's clear at a um, basic level. This is the structure of WordPress. Because WordPress is such a powerful platform, you have different options available to you. You can design on WordPress using a totally um, customized approach. That's the approach on the right here. Or you can design using a template approach, which is the approach on the left here. So there's pros and cons to both, right? Uh, as the name implies, custom approach means that you are fully in charge of the look and feel. Uh, so you, you can then create right, a website 100% based on your own custom requirements, right, down to the very last pixel. Right? So if you're very particular about how the look and feel and uh, you know, the, the size of your different uh, uh, logos and images on a website, um, then a custom approach is probably what you need. But you have to factor in a higher cost and a longer development time, right? because you are coding the theme uh, from scratch when you do a custom development. A template means you have existing templates as a starting point. So you don't have to code everything from scratch. Um, so based on the template, you can then further um, configure settings such as the uh, colors, the font sizes, and many other uh, layout details. Yeah. So uh, I would say today, most businesses, right, uh, use a hybrid approach, but um, they would normally start from a template before they do further customization. Uh, it's very rare to have a 100% custom uh, approach to WordPress because the cost and the development time goes up significantly, uh, significantly more. So what kind of timelines are we talking about? If you use a template approach, right, um, you can easily get a website up uh, within one to, I would say, I mean, a decent website up between one to three weeks time. Whereas a custom approach, right, uh, yeah, will raise the development time considerably more than that because you have got to code, you have got to check the coding, then you have to go back and forth uh, to see if the client, right, is, is also happy with what you've been coding. So template, I hope you are, I convinced you that the template uh, approach is uh, preferable. And on top of that, when you use a template approach, you have access to various plugins. So remember plugins are, um, are features, right? No, sorry, plugins are ways for you to extend the features of WordPress. So when you use a template approach, you have further access to what we call uh, page builder plugins. And this let you uh, um, develop in in an even more efficient way, because what they do is uh, they give you uh, what you see is what you get uh, interface for you to design your uh, your pages. So if you're familiar with using uh, Microsoft Word, right, or even PowerPoint, right, for uh, designing and laying out content, uh, then that, that's basically what these plugins here do, right? So you can design um, the layout of the content, you can type in the content, uh, and everything is uh, what you see is what you get, right? So as you are changing, making your changes, uh, you will see live how the website will look. So that's the um, advantage of using a page builder. Of these four page builders, Elementor is uh, currently the most popular worldwide, right? So in a way, you can't go wrong. Um, well, you can't go wrong if you choose any of this, but uh, my, my own preference is for Elementor. So hands-on WordPress, um, the first, the very first time someone moves to WordPress, there is a very uh, slight learning curve. If you are already familiar with page builders such as uh, Wix, uh, many of us uh, have seen Wix advertising right around the internet, especially when you're watching YouTube videos, you will often get an advertisement for a uh, Wix website builder. In fact, let me just open up your yeah, screen to Wix. So some of you might be familiar with Wix. Uh, some of you might be familiar with Squarespace. That's another popular 
website builder. And some of you might even be uh, familiar with uh, Weebly. And that's again another website builder. So what do Wix, Weebly and Squarespace have in common? All three of them are, are, are done for you platforms. That means similar to the hosted version of WordPress, right? The .com version. These sites, right, um, do it all for you, if, uh, including the hosting. So all you have to do is create an account and then you can start um, logging in and then uh, configuring your website straight away. Okay, so if you're familiar with any of these uh, builders, WordPress is somewhat similar, right? In the sense that uh, once you have WordPress set up on your hosting, you will be able to log in and you'll be able to start configuring um, the content and the look and feel. Okay, so um, this is the overview menu of WordPress. On the left hand side here, left most side here, you have um, the navigation menu. This is where all the key features are located off. Right, so if you want to create a new uh, page, then you create on pages. If you want to create a new blog post, then you click on post. If you want to add a new plugin to increase to um, increase the functionality, then you click on plugins here. And if you want to install a new team, right, so let's say you want to, to try out a new look and feel for a website, then uh, you install it under the appearance menu on the left here. So you see, there's only um, a handful of menu items here, and each one, one of them right, serves a very logical uh, uh, purpose. Right, so we've got posts for blog posts. Media is for you to upload your uh, images, your videos, and your other digital assets such as the PDF files. Pages is for you to create new content, content pages. So what's the difference between posts and pages? Posts are normally used for blogs. Right, so the difference is that posts let you enable commenting. So you can get people to comment on your posts right? Uh, and you can respond to the comments. Whereas pages right, are static pages. So it's just pages that you publish similar to a normal business website, the about page, the products page, uh, the contact us page. Right? So that's a page. Comments, uh, so comments relates to posts. right? If you allow, uh, if you create a blog with posts, then the comments that you get will appear under comments here. Appearance, right, is where you set up your team, right? So you select your blog team under appearance. Plugins is where you install uh, additional plugins to extend the functionality of WordPress. Users lets you, um, lets you assign additional team members uh, to uh, manage your WordPress website. Tools and settings, right, just uh, both provide uh, access to additional configuration settings uh, that apply to the whole website. So you see, that's it. I really talked through um, the menu on the left here, and that's really the main uh, gist of how you manage WordPress. Right? So hope you see it's not too uh, complex once you get a feel for it. The rest of the uh, settings here are really uh, contextual, dependent dependent upon what menu item you, you choose. Right? So based on what menu you choose on the left here, uh, then that will determine uh, what you see on the screen on the right here. Okay, so um, I, I had a um, kind of walkthrough exercise. So um, I'll save that for later. I will log into a live WordPress website and let you take a look, right? Um, to, to, to convince you that everything I've shown you is really all there is in the typical WordPress setup. Okay, so um, a bit technical here. Um, when you do the self-hosted version, right, the .org version of WordPress, remember you have to secure your own hosting and then install WordPress first. So this is probably the part that uh, gets the most technical. Um, the good news is that if you don't want to, you actually don't have to understand the details of uh, how WordPress is set up within your hosting server. But if you are an agency developing on behalf of a client, Right, or if you want to uh, really get your hands dirty right, and uh, be able to configure and upgrade WordPress yourself, then uh, it's useful for you to understand how the WordPress is set up. So you install WordPress on your hosting server. You have got uh, different files and folders that will be set up. Right? So uh, this is a bit uh, of a programming concept. Right? So all these files here 
are actually programming files. Uh, the language, the programming language used is called PHP. PHP, right? So every file will end with PHP. So these files right here, located in these folders, uh, are what enable WordPress to function as a content management system. So you have a WP admin folder. This contains all your administration functions. You have uh, includes, this again contains uh, more uh, additional functionality uh, for you to run the website. And the importantly for you as a user, you have a folder called WP content. Okay, so w WP content out of the box, right, is uh, nearly empty because this folder here is all your user uh, generated uh, content. So all your plugins that you choose, your themes that you choose, and your uh, media that you upload, right, your images and your videos and your PDF files uh, will, will be stored in this WP content folder. Right, so the concept here is very similar to uh, your normal uh, file explorer on your computer. You can literally uh, drill inside this folder and see all the file contents. So, um, so at the very least, right, you should be familiar with the structure of this folder. Right, so WP content is the main folder name. Within this folder, there's three subfolders. Right, so WP content plugins contains all the plugins which extend the functionality of your website. Themes contains all the themes, right, which determine the look and feel of your website. And finally, uploads contains um, all the images and videos and uh, media files which you upload. Right? So you see it's very uh, straightforward, right, as well in the structure. So I'm not sure if there's any questions at this point in time. Um, I hope I'm not going too fast, but um, what you can do, right, please, feel free to put your questions in chat, okay, so that, uh, yeah, I can respond to them uh, a little later. Okay, so I don't see any questions at the moment, so I will proceed. Um, so once you have set up WordPress and you understand um, the folder structure that I've just shown you, you can log in to WordPress, right? So you log in using your web browser and And then you can start configuring WordPress. Okay, so these few slides here relate to um, the, the original premise, right? How can you create effective business websites using WordPress? So you see, I first introduced WordPress as a technical tool, but uh, as a tool, right, it's, it's really powerful, but it's uh, not effective if you don't use the tool correctly, right? So a tools have to be used in a correct way. So my, um, my recommended process is to start with uh, a brief, right? So start with, by understanding what your clients or your own business objective is. And then uh, from there, build out a possible uh, prototype and look and feel of the website. Okay, so I mentioned at the start of this uh, session, right? That when you use WordPress, you don't even have to uh, prototype. You can, you can start building straight on WordPress. So um, in many cases, right, that is the fastest way for you to get your website up and running, right? You li literally in one to two days, um, you can create a new website, get the content in, uh, select a, a relevant theme, right? And you have the basic website ready to go. But for uh, brands and businesses, right, with uh, more defined, uh, brand guidelines, you will probably want to prototype first, right? So prototype the look and feel and the functionality of the website before you build it up in WordPress. So in, in those circumstances, then uh, we normally do what we call wireframing. So wireframing is basically drawing out um, the structure of how the website will look, right? So starting from the home page or to the deeper pages, uh, a wireframe shows you, right, um, how the information will be organized within your website among the different pages. And then the um, prototype will make use of mood boards as well as prototype uh, uh, mockups to show you what the actual pages will look like when uh, you know the images, the content, and the colors and the fonts are all in place. Right? So a mood board is a way for you to capture uh, different design uh, concepts, right? Which are relevant for your business or brand 
and then for you to use that as a way to communi communicate uh, to other people, what is the, the look and feel that you want for your website. So a mood board might be used by your designer. Uh, a mood board might be used by yourself, right? To collect um, ideas as, as you are thinking uh, about how your website should look and function. You can use a tool like milanote.com right, to create uh, these mood boards. Right? We show you uh, the images uh, nicely laid out in towns. Right? So this is a very uh, popular approach to using mood boards. So once you have a, a mood board, right, you will kind of have the feel uh, for the kind of uh, colors, fonts, um, and uh, the kind of uh, look and feel of the website, right? So is it going to be uh, elegant, uh, serious, or is it going to be fun and quirky, right? So these are very different design concepts uh, and re it's reflected in the color scheme and the fonts and the images that you choose. So the mood board uh, really helps you determine that. So for the mood board, you can either move on to wireframing the design, or like I mentioned earlier, if you are comfortable, you can move straight into WordPress already, right? So for the mood board, you can start building up your design concept directly in WordPress. So um, how do we go about starting our site in WordPress? Okay, this, uh, this one we can ignore for now. Uh, it says, it's talking about the importance of optimizing your images before you load them to WordPress. So WordPress, right, um, the self-hosted version starts with you setting up your website hosting. Now, for a Singapore business, it's probably preferable that you use a Singapore-based hosting provider. So I'll just give you one, two examples. Uh, I'm not endorsing any of them specifically, just that uh, they are commonly used right, by many businesses in Singapore. Right, so Vodian example of a Singapore-based uh, website hosting provider. So you can purchase your domain, right? So uh, mybusiness.sg, for example, you purchase it from them. And then after that, you purchase the hosting, right? So it's two things, right? You have to do, you have to purchase the domain first, and then you have to purchase the hosting. And after purchasing the hosting, then you set up WordPress, right? So that's where uh, you have to go into the hosting. And today, right, it's often as easy as a single click. So down here, uh, on the screen here, I'm showing you um, what we call a control panel for hosting that lets you set up WordPress within a single click. Okay, so um, I, I can't show you because I haven't set up uh, a new domain. Uh, but yeah, I think you have to take, take it in my word, right? It's as easy as that. Um, you can set up WordPress with uh, in a click when you have set up your hosting. So uh, you can use Bodian, uh, another popular local hosting provider yeah. is I think X uh, Bytes, right? And there's several others as well, right? So all these provide you the ability to uh, buy your domain name, right? So you see X Bytes is selling uh, .sg domain. There's a slight, there's a sort of a sale on right now for $39 uh, compared to $55 for a year. And then after that, you have to choose the hosting, right? So see for a small business what the costing is like. Okay, so for, okay, let me look at the pricing. So for their small business hosting, right, it starts from $6 a month. Yeah, so that's kind of going to be your um, full investment uh, in terms of the running costs, right? So number one, you need to purchase the Singapore domain, right? So that's $39 if you use exabytes. And then you need to get hosting for the WordPress website. So that's six dollars a month, right? So let's say uh, you sign up for one year, so six uh, times twelve, seventy-two dollars, right? So seventy-two, thirty-nine, yeah. So all in for about hundred and ten dollars, right? Uh, that's it. You can get your your own domain name. You can get your website hosted on uh, WordPress, um, and that's all. It is in running costs. So it's it's amazingly um, affordable, which is the reason why many SMEs, right, uh, go this route. Many SMEs will create their websites on WordPress after they've secured their hosting from a, a hosting provider such as this. So we install WordPress, we set the title and the details of our new website. Uh, we disable indexing. So this is for SEO purposes. 
Okay, so there's many steps here. Uh, I really go into more detail in a full training. Uh, I don't want to, to go into detail now because uh, it's a bit of information overkill in this, uh, in this session. Right? So what I want to do in this session is to get uh, to communicate to you the key uh, elements right, and the key uh, costings involved in setting up a business website. Right? So you have to configure all these settings, install your page builder. So like I recommended earlier, uh, I recommend Elementor as your, as your page builder. Set up your plugins, uh, set up what we call permalinks and install your theme, right? So your theme here will determine the overall look and feel uh, for your website. Okay, and next, uh, install the plugins you need, right? So if you need a contact form, then there is a plugin for that. If you need e-commerce even, there is another plugin for e-commerce. Yes, uh, amazingly, right? You can also run e-commerce from your WordPress website. So today, for many businesses um, that run e-commerce websites, they use a platform called Shopify. So um, as a done for you platform, right? Shopify is the most popular platform in Singapore. Uh, so you can sign up for an account and then um, everything is taken care of for you. You don't have to uh, manage the website itself. You don't have to manage the hosting. All right, so, but what you have to do is you pay a monthly fee to Shopify, right? To uh, run your e-commerce website. So that monthly fee starts from 29 US dollars. Uh, most businesses will find that uh, they need to upgrade uh, to the next plan, right? So I think more realistically, you're looking at something at 79 US dollars a month. So, um, I mean, in the big picture of things, this isn't a lot if you are, make, if you are um, your shop is selling very well and you're making hundreds of thousands, right? Or even millions of dollars in e-commerce sales. This is a very small investment. Uh, but for many other SMEs, right, you may want to start e-commerce, but maybe not necessarily have to, in, not to invest upfront in a monthly fee at this. So WordPress has got a solution. It's a plugin called WooCommerce. And this is actually the most popular uh, e-commerce option in Singapore because I mentioned most websites run WordPress, right? So those who run WordPress and who also want to run e-commerce will choose uh, WooCommerce. Number one, number one reason why is also free. The basic version of WooCommerce is free, just like WordPress, right? And it helps you uh, install and run uh, the e-commerce uh, functionality on the website. So once you install it, you have the ability to create products or services for sale, the ability uh, to set up um, your shopping cart, which means you can specify your uh, shipping details, your payment details, and your payment gateway, how you want to receive uh, payment from your customer, right? So all that is done um, by configuration without having to do coding within WooCommerce itself. So WordPress plus WooCommerce, right? Uh, it's a very powerful combination if you want to run e-commerce, right? And that is done under this step here. You install and activate plugins, right? So in this case, if I know I'm going to sell online, I will uh, activate the plugin called WooCommerce. The last, um, okay, the last plugins I will install would be what we call premium plugins. So, so far I mentioned, right, everything is FOC, free of charge. Yeah. The basic WordPress platform, WooCommerce is all free. But very often uh, businesses find, right, that they need to have some additional functionality that's not provided for uh, in the basic WordPress platform. Uh, so a common example is uh, forms, contact forms or let's say uh, email newsletters, right? So very often you want to have a very, uh, you want to have a way for customers to sign up for a very nice email newsletter. And for that, right, you need to sign up for a newsletter service. And when you do that, you actually have to install, sign up and then install what we call premium plugins, right? So these plugins, right, uh, are for paid services and they give you um, premium, supposedly premium functionality for your website. So can you get away without having to uh, to buy any premium plugins? Yes, if you do enough research, there's probably a free plugin available for nearly everything you need to do. But in many cases, right, your time is valuable. So you can save time uh, by, by using a premium option. And the premium option also comes with uh, support. Whereas if you use the free plugins, uh, of course, then uh, you're on your own, right? So if you hit a problem, 
um, you, there's no way you can get support unless you're willing to pay for the support. So now um, that's the whole configuration process of uh, WordPress. At this point in time, right, having configured the themes, the plugins, and the settings, you have really a basic function, basic functioning WordPress. Okay, so I, I'm showing you a screen, right, where I've logged into uh, a live WordPress website. Uh, let me show you the front end of this site uh, so that you can have an idea of what it looks like. Okay, so this is a website run not, not just for a very small business, it's actually for an uh, entrepreneur, right? So it's, uh, uh, it's more run for a single entrepreneur. So in this case, a uh, music teacher. Right? So he's got a full website. Uh, he's got different content pages, right? So testimonials, uh, lessons. Um, he's not running e-commerce because, yeah, you know, he's, he sells lessons. He doesn't sell products online. So this is an informational website. The objective of this website, right, is to get people to contact him, right? Either to call uh, WhatsApp or to fill up the online contact form. All right, so you see, a uh, very basic site, but it serves a very specific uh, functionality, right? A uh, business objective. So the back end of this site looks like this, right? When you're logged into uh, WordPress, this is what you will see. So it's exactly the same as um, the screenshot I showed you earlier. On the left-hand side, you have the posts, the pages, the appearance, the plugins, and the settings. There are a, a couple of other menu uh, options which were not in the default screenshot. And the reason for this is the plugins, right? So um, certain specific plugins may install additional menu options down here on the left side, side left hand side here. So, um, so that's what it looks like, right? So you install WordPress and you can start configuring the look and feel, right? So that's under appearance, themes. So in this case, this website is uh, installed and chosen a team called NEVE. Uh, Neve or Nev, I'm not sure how to pronounce it, right? But that's the name of the team for this uh, particular website. And plugins. So this site has got a whole range of plugins uh, that helps it deliver the necessary functionality, right? So let's see how many uh, plugins, 19 active plugins, right? So there's quite a few, right? So these plugins, right, all, each of them, right, is to achieve a different specific purpose for this business. So some of the plugins relate to what we call SEO, search engine optimization, helping the website uh, be found when someone's searching for them online. Some of the plugins relate uh, to the look and feel, right, and, and extending the look and feel of the website that you see here. Right, so together, right, the team plus the plugins, right, uh, provide the overall look and feel to the website and the functionality as well. So at this stage, right, we've installed WordPress, we've configured the team, the plugins. Um, now all that remains, right, is to create the actual content, right? So I'm, I'm talking about if this was a new website you're rolling out, then you start creating all the content. Right, and you create the navigation menu, right? So that's a menu at the top of the page here. that lets people navigate across the different pages on your site. Okay, so you just create the specific inner pages, right? So that include the pricing pages, the contact pages, the e-commerce pages. Um, make sure that you test the, the website in all screen sizes. This is really all part of uh, the full development and rollout. Um, uh, checklist, right? And then finally, when your site is, is ready, it looks great on desktop, tablet, mobile, right? So you can always check the tablet view and the mobile view of a site, right? By, if you're using a browser like Chrome, just shrink the window size today, right? So you see, as you move towards tablet, if you're using what we call a responsive site, the layout of the site will change right, to adapt to a tablet screen size. And then if you narrow the viewport even further, so now I'm moving towards a mobile screen size. You notice that, again, the layout, right, adapts nicely to a mobile device, right? So nothing is cut off. Everything is nicely reformatted for mobile device. So this is part of uh, what you need to do. And it's made easy uh, because WordPress uh, out of the box is actually uh, able to produce what we call responsive 
uh, formats. That means you can, your website will look good on desktop, tablet, or mobile. So once you've done that, your site looks great, it's tested, then um, you're ready to, what we say, go live, right? So you're ready to show your creation to the, to the world. And after you've uh, transferred your site live, that's when you start marketing, right? So uh, marketing a site, right? Um, try, relates back to your original objective, right? So what's the original objective of the site? Using my, my example I gave today, uh, the objective of my site, right, is to brand myself strongly online and also to generate more inquiries and leads for my business, right? So in this case, the objective is for this business, right, to generate more inquiries and more uh, people will fill out the contact form. So then the marketing takes over and uh, we have to execute the marketing strategy based around the website. So the strategy could involve using social media, it could involve uh, using paid search, it could involve using um, video marketing and many other channels, right? So that's when um, your marketing strategy takes over. The nice thing about WordPress, right, again, is that out of the box, um, it, is, it is really very optimized for search engines. Um, and on top of that, right, you can further enhance WordPress to make it really, really uh, what we call search engine friendly. So if someone is searching for your website, um, whether your brand or your product keywords, uh, WordPress sites tend to do very well when they have been optimized. So the key thing is to know uh, how to optimize, right, and what to optimize. So the first thing to do is to install and configure a, what we call a SEO, search engine optimization plugin. Right, so that and it ensures that you have the, the necessary functionality for your site to be visible and to rank well for uh, the content that you are targeting. Make sure your site loads fast, right, on desktop, mobile, and tablet, right? So that's another, another uh, very important factor, both for users, no one likes to browse a slow website, right? And it's also an important factor for ranking as well, right? So you have to ensure your site loads fast, is mobile friendly, in order for you to get higher rankings in Google and the other search engines. And if necessary or if possible, use uh, advanced features such as a CDN. So CDN stands for a content development network. Um, some of you might or might not have heard of a website called Cloudflare. Okay, so if you are uh, unfamiliar with CDNs or content development networks, uh, I encourage you to uh, go to this website called cloudflare.com and just read up right on what a content development network is and how you can speed up your website. And so Cloudflare um, starts from free, right? There's a, let me just check with the, they still have a free plan. I'm pretty sure they do. Yeah, so Cloudflare starts from free. And then from there, um, based on your business requirements, right? You can move up to the more professional packages. Yeah, so the free version is really good because it enables you, right? To uh, load your website even faster and also protects you against certain um, hacking um, attempts and hacking attacks, right? So again, for details, right? I um, encourage you to go to Cloudflare and uh, read through the details there. So install a CDN, make sure um, all the necessary security plugins and settings are in place, right? So WordPress being the most popular platform in the world, it's also the most popular target um, for hackers, right? So if you're not careful, um, and this applies to any business and to any website, right? Even the government in Singapore is not immune to uh, getting their information hacked, right? So same for WordPress, uh, you need to make sure you put in place uh, the essential security features. So that will, that will, that will include installing a plugin such as WordFence to secure a website, making sure your hosting is secure and making sure your passwords, right? And access is all secure as well. So then um, from there, you can start doing SEO. So you have the SEO plugin. You can now start doing SEO within WordPress. So this slide here highlights uh, the key, some of the key things you need to do to ensure your website can start ranking well so that it can be more effective for your marketing and your campaigns that you're running, right? So you need to ensure your site is structured uh, optimally according to the content hierarchy. So 
simple example, right? So I, I gave you an example of the site earlier, which is um, created for this violin teacher. So you need to ensure that the content, right, is structured logically, right? And it's, it's easily accessible. So for violin teacher, people in general want to know um, about the teacher himself, right? So that'd be about, they want to know about the lessons for adults and for children. So that's lessons. Uh, they want to know how good is this teacher so they can go testimonials to find out uh, reviews and ratings for the teacher. Of course, they want to know um, how much they'll pay, right? If they want to take a lesson and any other questions that they have will be answered in the FAQ. Uh, and finally, if they are ready to sign up for a trial lesson, they will want to contact the teacher, right? So the contact form will be there. Um, one or two other important forms are the privacy policy. If you are a business, you, uh, you should have a page de detailing your privacy policy as well. Right? So have the optimal content structure. Uh, make sure that all your content is optimized, right? So that will be optimizing what we call the content on the page. Right, so the title tags and the content below the fold, above the fold and below the fold, all this right, should be optimized so that it can be easily read by the search engines as well as by your users. And responsive, I mentioned, make sure it, it looks great on mobile, tablet, and desktop. And it also uh, is very user uh, friendly, right? So the user experience, which kind of ties back again to the very first step using design thinking, right? So if you use design thinking to design your WordPress website, uh, you'd be in a very good position because the choices you made, right, in, in configuring and building a website, WordPress website uh, would really have taken into account the requirements of your target users, right? So that's the whole reason why um, um, we use design thinking at the very start of our process. And once you have that in place, right, you can then um, do a final audit. So these are several checks that you can do. That's to make sure, right, your site is really running uh, in tip-top condition, right? So you want to launch a uh, Ferrari or a website. You want to launch, right, uh, a slow and unperforming website. So these final checks will ensure right, that you do everything uh, you can within your budget, of course, uh, to make sure your site delivers an ex exceptional experience for users. And that really is uh, a very, very quick, but I think a uh, very comprehensive walkthrough, right, of um, how you can use WordPress to set up a very well-functioning and uh, performing business website for a business. So I can op um, open up for questions now. Um, let's see. If you have any questions, right, do feel free to post them in the chat. While you are typing your questions, if any, um, just want to highlight right that this session today uh, is hosted right, and uh, promoted by Aventis Learning Group. Right? So uh, established since 2008, right, they are a award-winning corporate training provider uh, and they offer a wide range of topics. Right? So I say a topic on nearly anything that you might want to upgrade or upskill yourself on. And of course, before this current uh, COVID um, uh, crisis, uh, most of not most, all the courses were run face-to-face, uh, -face, either uh, at their premises or uh, in-house. But um, during this period right now, right, you can take any of the training that they provide um, online. Right? So it will be delivered in an interactive format online, uh, the same level of quality, but without having uh, right, to be physically uh, present in the same room. So the course which I am currently um, teaching. It's called WordPress, Market, uh, WordPress Marketing Masterclass. And in that class, right, I'll walk through step-by-step uh, step everything I've covered today. Uh, but we actually go um, deeper, like I mentioned. Today, I, some of the technical settings, of course, I couldn't uh, dive into them for, for uh, time reasons. I didn't want to bore you as well. Uh, but those will be covered in detail during this class. And also mark the marketing aspect, right? So, uh, it's important that you, once you have your website, you effectively market it so that you do get your desired business outcomes. So how do you tie your marketing back to the website that you created? Uh, so that's some of the things which uh, will be discussed in this uh, training, full training is run uh, at Aventis. So if you're interested, do uh, feel free to contact Roshini or Aventis using this QR code or any of the contact details um, on the screen here.
if you have questions on the session itself, um, feel free to reach out to me. Right, so my LinkedIn and my email address is there. Uh, very happy to answer any questions that you have uh, relating to this session or WordPress or marketing in general. Okay, let me just check if there's any questions. Okay, so I have one question. Um, can, I um, can I confirm if you'll be using Elementor during the course? Yes, uh, Elementor will definitely be one of the plugins covered during the course. Uh, like I mentioned, Elementor is my, actually my number one recommendation today. Um, but WordPress being such a powerful platform, if you do a quick uh, survey right, of the plugins market, you'll realize that there's actually several very good world-class pl uh, plugins that can help you achieve uh, whatever you're trying to do. So for that reason, um, I, I never just focus on simply one plugin. Various reasons for that, right? So what is um, number one today uh, might very easily, right, uh, become number two or number three or even be discontinued tomorrow. So it's always good to have um, a, a few options to choose from. And number two, uh, no one plugin does everything um, uh, well, right? So some plugins do certain things really well. And if your requirements, right, are just for that particular uh, feature or functionality, maybe that plugin will fit the need better. Yeah, so uh, bottom line, yes, Elementor is uh, the basic fun, uh, plugin that we use to, uh, to walk through the design process on WordPress, but we'll definitely um, introduce one or two other plugins as well, which are used in the industry today. How, uh, another question, how will Wix compare to WordPress for a free version? Very good question. Um, so those platforms like Wix, Squarespace, and Weebly, there's a reason why they are very popular. They are also very popular in Singapore, right? So I'm, if you're talking about self-hosted, WordPress is number one. But if you're talking about hosted for you, right? Then uh, Wix is number one, I think, followed by uh, Squarespace and then followed by Weebly, right? So if, if it's a done for you platform, right? Then those are really, really uh, excellent world-class platforms. So uh, how do we compare? In terms of uh, the design, they compare very, very well. In fact, uh, many designers right, prefer to use uh, Squarespace or Wix or Weebly um, because um, there are certain features that let them uh, deliver the design more efficiently on those platforms. But in terms of functionality, uh, that's where uh, they can fall short, right? Because they are done for you platforms, you are limited to whatever features and functionality they've done for you. So to extend those features, you either have to use plugins. They do provide plugins for themselves and third parties, but you have to pay extra. So on top of the monthly fee you're paying for Wix, you have to pay for plugins as well to achieve additional functionality. So for that reason, the running costs, right, are typically for a Wix or Weebly or, or Squarespace website is going to be higher than um, a WordPress website. So you have to weigh those two, those two things. But the upside is that uh, on those sites, you don't have to do the maintenance, right? And you don't have to worry about things like security, right? So it's far less likely that your site will be hacked unless uh, you are not careful, for example, with your login details and someone else is able to access your website. But it's far, far less likely that your platform itself will be compromised. Um, so you have to weigh the pros and cons. Um, there's definitely a place for those builders. But uh, if you're moving beyond a brand website, towards e-commerce, right? Definitely, uh, I would move towards WordPress or towards uh, Shopify, a more dedicated um, e-commerce platform, right? So either WordPress with WooCommerce, on the enterprise level, you have um, Magento or using uh, Shopify. Um, would it be possible of having face-to-face -face class? Okay, so uh, this question, very good question. Um, this question, you, you will need to check with, um, Adventists, they are closely monitoring the situation, of course. Uh, and of course, they will be uh, most happy, right, uh, to be able to open up and, to, and allow these face-to-face um, -face classes. So check with them directly uh, on the current situation and whether any new classes um, will be scheduled on a face-to-face -face basis. But my understanding is currently it's still, um, it's still done online and virtually. Uh, would the websites be affected if we choose not to update the plugins? Um, another very good question, yes. So 
I already mentioned earlier, right? One advantage of using Wix and Weebly is that uh, they take care of the platform for you. So for WordPress, it is important that you regularly update your website. So either you, which means uh, you have to kind of get your hands dirty, like I mentioned, and be able to log in, uh, go to the screen like this, right? And be able to update the plugin. So you notice some of my plugins here um, need updating, right? So they're saying there's a new version of this plugin. Please update now. So of course, it's not possible for you to do this on a daily basis. Uh, but at the very least, right, you should be checking your site on a quarterly basis. You should be ensuring that your uh, email address is entered in the, as the administrator of the site. Because what happens is that WordPress will actually email you if there's a critical uh, upgrade to be made. And you should ensure that you install uh, the necessary security plugins such as WordFence. On top of all that, right, uh, you need to ensure you have a reliable backup system in place. Um, there's no matter what, there's always going to be a chance that your site is still compromised. There's no 100% secure um, uh, website, right? So if you have a backup, let's say you backup on a daily or at the very least a weekly basis, uh, at least, right, you can still restore your latest backup in, a, in case your website is compromised. But back to the question, should you uh, update the plugins? Yes, you should. You may not have time to update it on a daily or weekly basis, but at least on a monthly or quarterly, you should just log in here. And you see here, any updates that need to be done, right? You click on update now. So at the basic level, that's all needs, that needs to be done. Sometimes, right, um, things do can go wrong, right? Because you update and then you get some technical errors. So that's where you need to decide, um, are you going to be the one that really dives in and gets your hands dirty and understands WordPress? Or maybe some, uh, someone else, right? A colleague uh, or a member of your, of your staff or even outsource to a uh, a developer or agency, right? So whoever it is, someone should be in charge of maintaining your WordPress on a regular basis. Yes, uh, backup is, is definitely covered as part of the go live checklist, right? So you need to have a backup solution in place really. Sometimes the backup is provided by a hosting provider. Sometimes the backup is provided through use of a plugin in WordPress itself, right? So uh, we'll discuss both options. Thank you, everyone. Uh, this is great questions. Um, like I mentioned, if you have um, any other questions, right, uh, feel free to post them, or you can you can still contact me direct even after the training. I'll be happy to uh, get back to you. Yeah, I'm just going to wait uh, probably a minute more to see if there's any remaining questions. Right, again, this is the course details. Uh, I hope you will sh um, share the details with anyone else who you know might be interested in attending this training. And of course, I hope that uh, you yourself might be interested and I might see you in a upcoming class. Okay, I think uh, either everyone's hungry, right? Or there are no more questions. So um, thank you all for spending one hour. It's just been, yeah, it's, it's been just about one hour with me. Um, I hope you found this uh, session uh, interesting and uh, useful uh, in helping understand how to use WordPress to power out your business websites. Um, so there's no further questions. Um, I'm going to close off today's session. This is Ivan Wong uh, signing off on behalf of Advantis. Thank you all for attending this session.